At the beginning of Matthew 17 we read, and After six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. The transfiguration was a foretaste of the kingdom. As Christ had said at the end of chapter 16, Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The transfiguration was an occasion when, as the writer of the Hebrews said, the joy was set before him, an illusion which is strengthened by the mention of a cloud of witnesses, for there was also a cloud at the transfiguration. In this video we will see that the transfiguration invoked the glory of Solomon, showing that Solomon's reign foreshadowed the reign of Christ in his kingdom, which he will establish on earth when he returns. Matthew says, His face did shine as the sun. A face shining typifies wisdom. As Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 8 verse 1, Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So when Christ's face shone, it was a physical representation of his wisdom. Solomon was renowned for his wisdom, but Christ has greater wisdom than even Solomon. When Christ was transfigured, his raiment was white as the light. Whiteness is associated with righteousness. In Revelation 19, it is said of the bride, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And in verse 11, the one who judges in righteousness is sat on a white horse. In Psalm 72, the psalmist says, Give the king thy judgments, O God and thy righteousness unto the king's son. This is speaking of Christ, but also has an application to Solomon, the son of the king, David. So the psalmist asks for righteousness to be given, in the first instance, to Solomon. But the link with Solomon and the white raiment of the transfiguration is not just concerned with this general point about righteousness. There is a much more fundamental link which relates to the prophecy of Ahijah and the play on Solomon's name. In 1 Kings 11, verse 29 to 31, we read, And it came to pass at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith Yahweh the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. The garment represented the kingdom of Israel. Each piece represented a tribe. At that time, Solomon was king, and he, as it were, was clothed in the garment of the kingdom of Israel. When Rehoboam became king, he would be clothed with the garment of the kingdom, but the garment would be rent, and ten tribes would go over to Jeroboam. The analogy of putting on a garment to represent ruling over a country is also found in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 43 verse 12 says, And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captives, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd put it on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. Here the garment is Egypt, and the man who was to be clothed with this garment was Nebuchadnezzar. But back in 1 Kings 11, there is a play on words between the word for garment and the word Solomon. In the quotation, the strong numbers have been placed after the word for garment and after the word Solomon. Beneath the quote, there are extracts from Strong's Concordance relating to these two words. Salma is the word for garment, and Shaloma is the word for Solomon. The key point to note is that they are spelt the same in Hebrew, as can be seen if the Hebrew letters of each word are compared. This play on words underpins some words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 6 verses 28 to 31 says, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, 
Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? As the strong codes indicate, the word arrayed and clothed translate the same Greek word. That Christ chose to use Solomon as an example reflects not only Solomon's greatness, but the play on words in Hebrew between the name Solomon and the word for garment. That the raiment of Christ was as white as the light at the transfiguration depicts the greatness of the glory of the kingdom with which Christ will be arrayed, a glory which will be greater even than that of Solomon. We have considered the play on words between the name Solomon and the word for garment. But Solomon also had another name, Jedidiah, and this too has a link with the transfiguration. In 2 Samuel 12 we read, And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. And Yahweh loved him, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah, because of Yahweh. When we think of the term beloved, we usually think of David, which means beloved. But we should also think of Solomon, for the name Jedidiah means beloved of Yah. So when God said at the Transfiguration, This is my beloved son, it was a declaration that his son was like Solomon, and truly greater than Solomon.